Hello there, it's uh, Karen here from craftylittlemisskay.co.uk and today I'm bringing you a little video of me making up some of these lovely little baskets. Um, I'm taking part in a blog hop at the weekend, stamp and hop blog hop, um, and our subject is um, anything from the second release of the celebration for this year, that's 2018. And I decided that I wanted to make some of these little baskets anyway. Yeah, a little practice run, a little um, for, for Easter and little thank you gifts for people at the classes I'm teaching. Um, but I wanted to have a go at the basket weave folder, which I got just the other day. And it comes as a two part set. And this is what I'm going to be using for the blog hop. So this video will actually go into my blog hop blog <laughs> and it'll go live on Saturday. So this is a two part offer. And I'm just checking to make sure I'm not sort of like blinding you. That's okay because my camera, I use a, my my old, my, well not my old, my, my current mobile phone. And the camera on it, um, it's not like an iPhone, it doesn't do all the fancy stuff. So what you see is what you get. I don't, video, I don't edit out anything. So if I'm waffling, you'll hear me waffling. If I make a mistake, you'll see me making a mistake. So this is what I'm using for the blog hop. I'm using the um, Celebration Blossoming Basket set and the matching um, embossing folder, which is one of the fat ones. It's a thick one, so you don't need two plates if you're using it on the, on the Big Shop. Um, I hear that when we get our new um, annual catalogue, we'll be able to get this on its own. But I want to do, get it as part of the Celebration offer, so I've got all the pretties to go with it as well. So this is what I'm using today anyway. Okay, yes, so this is what creates this lovely basket weave effect on these baskets. Much, much nicer looking than just the plain one. Nothing wrong with the plain one, apart from the fact I made a mistake. This is the first one I made. Um, so I looked around, because um, I've seen these before, and I thought I really want to make some of these baskets. So I looked around on the internet, and I found two different sizes. There's one um, independent stamp up demonstrator who um, comes from Illinois. Her name is Lisa Lang, and she made little ones using a five by five yes five by five square card and that makes up the smaller one and then crafty caroline uh, based here in the uk who uh, made them six by six and she made the bigger ones and let's face it if you're a chocolate lover like i am what size would you rather have full of chocolate full of easter eggs big one so it's going to be the six by six the larger one that i'm going to be making today as you can see, I've already made one up, so let's move all these little one, empty ones out of the way. And I've already made this one up using Ferrero Rocher. I would like to have had it so that it was full of Easter eggs, uh, like the mini eggs, but I can't because I can't say no to, ch to those kind of chocolates. These ones, I love Ferrero Rocher, but these are used, being used later on in the week for a class that I'm doing, so I can't eat them. But I am a bit of a chocoholic, so they might not last after the class. Anyway. So this is what we're going to be making so I'll just move that out the way but I'm going to be using and I've just set all those baskets on top of the card I'm going to be using uh, one of the current in colors for 2008 uh, 2017 uh, 2019 which is berry burst and this is a six by six card uh, that's just scrap those two pieces there and then I've just cut across the width of one of the a4 sheets um, and I've cut it half an inch wide and that's going to be the handle okay so we'll deal with that in a moment these scrappy bits will come later on so first of all we need to fold that and my school board has been crashing all over the place I've restarted this video about three times because the school board as soon as I finish scoring which is why there's so many baskets made up because the school board just crashes down and just completely um, drowns me out and makes me forget what I was saying so the measurements, okay, like I said, six by six. So you do the first score at two and then at four. And then you turn around and you do two and four. So you've got this nice even squares here. Now what we're gonna be doing now is gonna do some more scores in here. Actually, just two more scores in here, just down to this line here, each corner, turn it around again in each corner, okay? So those score lines are five eighths of an inch, which is that and one and three eighths and in this corner it's four and five eighths which is there and five and three eighths now i noticed that this middle one and this middle one were wider than these two 
So when it comes to comes time to do the cutting, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting just inside that score line there, just inside that score line there, basically to make these ones just slightly wider, this minutely thinner, straight up the middle of that score line there. OK, but before we do that, there's one last thing I need to do while I'm here, and that's just make a notch at the three inch mark. So about halfway across. Repeat over this side, so five eighths, one and three eighths notch at three and then four and five eighths I have to think for a minute and then five and three eighths that's it and that is the scoring done let's see if I can manage to put this down where it won't fall it's right out the way I can't knock it with my feet kick it with my chair or whatever okay so what we're going to do now is like I said we're going to cut straight up that one there and then just slightly in, not all the way in, just so you're still on the score line, but just slightly in. There'll be a little little ridge just so you can about see it. And then the same on this one. Now it won't make that middle one exactly the same width as the other two, but it'll make it a bit just that little bit thinner. And then on this side, straight up the middle. And then just like this. I'll have to find somewhere to keep all those baskets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make in smaller ones for my friends at my slimming club. You might laugh that I'm giving people Easter baskets that, who are trying to lose weight. I go to Slimming World here in the UK and Slimming World and the other one, the Weight Watchers, um, all say, you know, you can eat. I'm just going to get my bigger scissors just to do this so I can do it in one sweep. They say you can have chocolate, and you can, as long as you don't overdo it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the smaller baskets for my friends at Slim and Weld, and I'm going to put something that's a bit more Slim and Weld friendly. Oh, I haven't cut those ones yet. I thought I'd finished. There we go. That's because I'm waffling. Thinking about chocolate. Okay. Right. That's what I'm done, isn't it? Yes. So let's go back and do that last triangle then. I wish Stampin' Up! had some big scissors. Those little black handle scissors are from Stampin' Up! and they are so sharp. Um, these ones are just ordinary ones I bought in the shop. For bigger cuts. Okay, so you're going to end up with this. So you've got this here. Now, when I made this little one, because I've made the plain one first of all, just to see how it's made together, put it together. When I made this one, uh, I just left it like this, then I put it through the embossing folder and when it came time to fold all those score lines I couldn't find them because the embossing folder had hidden them, the embossing rather had hidden them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just give all these a quick fold now. I'm not going to worry about pressing down or burnishing or anything like that. Okay, I'll put them up again and then that one. Same on this side. And then we'll get the big shot out in a sec. Oop, that wasn't doing, doing very well. Let me just redo that one. Straighten it up a bit. There we go. Okay. Oh, no, missed two. There we go. Okay, so, big shot. Now I'm just using the basic plate underneath. And like I said, because it's one of the thick... Um, I'm sure I don't need to do that. Just pull it. Ooh, that's one of my punches going. See, I told you, I'm just so clumsy. I'm always dropping something. So, big shot platform, one cutting plate, which is very old and scratched, as you can see. But I'm not going to throw it away because it's handy for when I'm doing embossing. Um, and then the plate. What we're going to do is we're just going to put it in like this, so that those legs are sticking out. And just bear with me a sec while I make sure that that's about halfway, which it is. Um, and then always put the fold side in first. Now that's six inches that card, so you've got to make sure it's straight on that bottom plate so we don't catch it as it goes through. Okay, here we go. So, oops, there we go, all done. Let's take that away first. See if I can put it away without knocking anything else over. Better pick up my punch as well. See, I'll be needing that in a minute. Okay, so there we are. Look at that beautiful, so deep 
the etch and you can see obviously it's got a, a right and a wrong way um, okay so let's go find those fold lines again now I know what you're probably thinking you're probably thinking what about these plain bits here they will be covered in the end and you don't have to worry about it too much if you're making the smaller basket because it's the smaller you'll just get a very small plain bit which will be covered very easily but these ones anyway let's moving on so what we need to do now is turn it up that way and what we're going to be doing is just matching those up like that. It doesn't have to go right to where the embossing is. So about you know, halfway along. The, basically what you're doing is making sure that this line across here is flat. So let's get my wet glue. Love this stuff. Goes a long way. Okay, so let me just hold it in place for a second. While it sets... I mean, it'll still be, I could still pull it apart if I wanted to, but I just want to make sure it doesn't let go. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to stand up so I can show you this. I'm actually going to put some glue on all these pieces here, like this. Okay, I'll sit down again. And then just bring them up so that each piece is level with the top bit there. Give it a little press and hold. Make sure it takes, and same on this side. This little area here is just going to get very, very bulky, but it won't show and it won't matter because we're going to put a cover on it in a minute. Okay. Now there's a little tiny bit of where well, they've just slightly overlapped. I might get my snips in a minute and just take those off so they're nice and flat. Bring that one up. I'm just going to hold it for a second to make sure it's definitely set so it doesn't come apart. Okay, love this colour. I really love this colour. Never used to be a pink person. I was always a tomboy when I was younger. Can't stand pink. My favourite colour was always blue, but as I've got older, I've got this sop here, I expect. Anyway, so oops, make sure that's even. That's it. You'll find that it doesn't quite match underneath, but it doesn't matter because that's going to be covered anyway and you won't notice it on the inside. Okay, so like before, a little spot of glue on all those flaps. Don't put too much on because it oozes out and it gets all over your fingers and you make a mess. Everything sticks to each other, so I'm feeling a bit sticky now actually. And that one. I keep half expecting my phone to go. My husband's downstairs, he's not well. I'm upstairs in my craft room, he's not well, so he's not at work today. And I said to him, I'm going upstairs to do, do some work. I said, do you need anything? No, I'm all right. Not men alike. And um, he said, I'll call you if I need anything. And it's been a little while, so I've been playing, doing other things, so he might just phone up to say, what are you doing? Anyway. I do feel sorry for him because he doesn't usually get ill. But we all know that men's flu is much worse than ladies' flu, so I'm just going to cut those pointy bits off just so they don't interfere with the next stage. It's got a little sticky patch there, but it's going to be covered up so get rid of those little bits. Didn't actually throw them in the bin, just threw them into the onto the floor. Okay. Now, the scrap piece of uh, card that we had and the punch I threw all over the floor, one and three quarter inch circle punch. If you're making the smaller version with the five inch square, you will need a one inch circle. And you need two of those. Let's put that away from the edge so it doesn't fall again. And then what we're going to do now is glue again. And I'm just going to put a, again, not too much because you're going to be oozing over the top or out of the needle. Now, where those flat pieces are, your circle will now cover that up. It doesn't have to be halfway up. It can be further down. And then you just fold the top over. Okay, so you get that effect. Oops, should have a little bit longer. Okay. So that's that. Do the other side. Like 
make sure it goes down far enough to hide the flat areas. I live in the south part of the UK and although we've got quite a bit of snow, enough to make me think I might not have to be able to go to work, not have to be able to go to work, I did manage to get out. It was a bit hairy coming home when it's uh, when it was all slippery. I live on a hill so it's difficult to get up when it's been snowing. My friends and some of my family live in the Midlands, so halfway up the UK if you're outside of the country, and they got it quite heavily. And I believe theirs is still hanging around, although it's not snowing now. Um, we've got quite mild in the UK again now, and um, our snow disappeared once the, it rained, and that was it. Our snow disappeared down here in the south, but up in the north, I think it's still around. Right, I'm just going to you call it, stroking it, just sort of like pulling it slightly, just to give it a slight bend. And then I'm just going to oh, on what that say, convex, convert, yeah, whatever, on the bit that sticks up. Just going to put a little bit of glue at each end. Now you can use, you can put this handle either that way or that way. So that way, obviously, you get a taller one. I've already done a few that way, so I'm actually no, I won't, because I've only put a little tiny bit of glue on a flat piece to stick it to, and I don't know if it'll stick on that because of the embossing. So we will do it this way. And then turn it around. So, let me fingers as well. And there we are. Okay. So I have got some of the lovely shred that we've had in the um, winter catalogue, which I shouldn't really be using now, but matches it. So we're going to use a little tiny bit of it. And then what we'll do is put a little, because it goes a long way, this stuff. That's why I've still got a big bag of it. So we'll just put a little bit of that in the bottom. And then, obviously, if you haven't got any of the shreds, this, and you've got a um, a shred and shredding machine, like if you want to shred all your private papers, grab some coloured paper and just put it through the shredder. And there we go. Okay, and then I'll just grab four of these. And there we are. Now, I've got one last thing to do. Um, I decided to use, and I can't find it, there it is, I decided to use a contrast colour on this one, these ones I used like the same colours, and I did on this one, you see I've got one of the Hatrix from last year, I did actually put the blue one at first, so I thought oh no it's too dark, so I changed it for some gold, but this one I'm going to just use some of the powder pink, it's another one of the in colours, and I think we'll put it this side, actually. That's it. And then, oh, they're going to fall out. I knew they would, but I need to lay it on its side. I can't do it unless it's laying on its side. I'll stick them back in in a minute. And then, just make my bow. Oh, it hasn't gone very well, has it? That's because it's a little bit thicker than the other ribbon I was using. Let's do that again. So let's move them out. That's it. Bigger loop. That's better. Okay. A little bit of fiddling and faffing about. I'm not going to do it too much. That's not too bad at all. Much. I'm not going to cut any of those bits off. Let's put those strands back in. Stick it back in. Okay, now what you can do is just leave it like that, or you can do what I'm going to do, and I've got somewhere in here it is. I've got the um, stamp set Data Dream, which is a hostess um, stamp set. You have to spend over a certain amount, which look my head doesn't, because I'd never have parties that spend this much. This is me ordering. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a hostess get, uh, set only, which you have to spend... I can't think how much it was. I had a big order going in anyway, and then it entitled me to get this. Um, and I'm going to use the word sweet. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to punch it out using the pretty label punch. Okay, so let's get that scrap of paper over. And I will use the Berry Burst ink to match the basket. So let's get this block out.
Now, these polymer stamps, they do need a little bit of cushioning. I mean, I've got my pad here, which will be enough, but if you're not using a pad or if you're using one sheet, I advise you to use a stamping pad. And I don't have a stamping up one. I've got an old one here, like the really heavy duty foam. And I use those, but the pad should be enough. Okay, so sweet is on there. So just make so as you can see. So just ink it up, and then be careful not to rock it now because, as, as you can see, I've actually got ink elsewhere on the uh, block as well. Straight down, press, hold, and then straight up, and there we go. Sweet. If you're using the photopolymer, if you're not using them before. When you clean them, you'll find you might find that some of the pink will stay on there. Don't worry, it's just staining, it won't affect your, your stamps. I'm actually going to clean this straight away so that it doesn't actually stain it. I've got a stamping scrub off camera, I've got a shelf that I keep it on that I use, just leave it there all the time. So, there we go. Okay, as you can see, there's a little tiny bit of pink staining on there, but it won't affect next time you use it if you're using another color. Oh, don't put it in there. So, put it back in its place. That's it. Okay, so if you haven't got this set, or if you can't get hold of this set, I mean, put anything on there. I just thought I'd fancy the um, the sweet. What I really wanted to do was put something to do with chocolate on there. But So what I'm going to do now is just work out, I'm just going to put this in the other way, just work out roughly where the middle is, and then punch. And then what you can do, you can either punch a hole in it and tie it underneath there, which I think I might do that actually. So make sure it's in the middle. There we go, nice little hole. Grab some of my baker's towel. Get these way over here. Of course, off screen. I've got a nice, got the nice silver one. I need to get some more look it's running out and then underneath the bow like that you can tie it in a bow or I'm like do like under I'm just going to tie it in a knot and then cut the ends of the uh, baker's twine off like that let it hang down a little bit if you can't see this can you but I will show you as soon as I've done that's it and then just cut those loose pieces off. That's not quite a tight knot there, you just pull that. That's better. There we go. And there we are, if I hold them in, there we are. Pretty. You could spun the edge, uh, spun, spun, sponge the edges of the um, tag if you want, but I'm not going to. Maybe I should have done it with the pink to match the ribbon. But there we are. So. I am nearly all set for Easter with all my little baskets. Actually, no, I'm not. I've got a lot more to do. But what I thought I might do is, um, for my friends, I'm going to do the little one. I haven't got any with me because um, I would eat them. Uh, the little Freddo um, chocolate fro um, frogs. I think there's something like Five Sins or something on Slimming World. So I'm just going to pop one of those in there and give them to my friends, maybe with a little bit of um, the shredded paper underneath as well. Um, so there we are. Lovely. Little baskets. And using the using the um, the basket weave embossing folder really adds to them. So pretty. I should be making lots of these in the future. Okay, so I hope you liked them. I hope I haven't waffled on too much. Um, check out my blog and I will give you all the measurements again on there. I'll also, um, yeah, you'll be able to see the, the blog hop and hopefully you'll, you'll follow on around the blog hop and have a look at some of the other demonstrators have been doing. Um, we come from all over the world. There's a few of us here in the UK. Then I think there's a couple of one or two German um, demonstrators and then some from America. Um, yeah, so hope to see you again soon. Bye.